Good evening, Dheeraj. Good evening, sir. Warm welcome to you, sir. क्या बढ़िया गाना सुन रहे हो? जी, sir, मैंने कहा आपके welcome के लिए कुछ स्वागत तो होना चाहिए. नहीं नहीं, बहुत beautiful song. अगर आप इजाजत दें तो एक एक welcome song आपके लिए. आप आए जनाब बरसों में हमने पी है शराब बरसों में आप आए जनाब बरसों में अच्छा अब आप ये गाना भी शुरू कर दिया मैंने पहले कभी देखा ही नहीं आपको गाना गाते हुए नहीं सर बस फोटोग्राफी के साथ साथ तो और चीजें चल रही हैं ना सम पोइट्री सम सॉंग्स मजा आ रहा है सर Gee. How lovely is that? Yeah. And, you know, I I follow you so ardently across the world, Gee. and I must say, what you've done with photography is quite remarkable. Thank you, sir. Thank you for I your mean, wonderful comments. Really, really, I I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed every minute of your experiences, and I must say that the students you are creating are quite remarkable. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your compliment. And I have another very big compliment for you. And I met your dear uncle the other day. Yeah, and uh, we were having lunch together, mm -hmm. and the praise that he has to speak of you for you was phenomenal. Very nice, sir. Very nice. So sir, good that we we all are from the same mentor as Paul, legendary photographer. So absolutely. that runs in our blood. Yes. So he he brought three things in our family. Yes. One is music, then photography, and then love for nature. How lovely. Ji. And I think I've seen the photography side of your story uh, very intimately. I've been very yeah. fortunate to see yeah. you and your talent and your wonderful talent. Thank you, I sir. Mean, Thank you very much. You and you and me have done three phenomenal books. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll give one one brief introduction before we start. Like all our friends are welcome for this great uh, uh, agenda, which is like food photography, and we have an expert food expert with us. Rocky Mohan Sahib, who has done four books, and I'm lucky that out of those four, three were done by me. Sir, I'm right on this. Absolutely, sir. And uh, the fourth one you would have also done. Uh, yeah. Un unfortunately, that was a, a book sponsored by by somebody else. Yeah. And yeah, it yeah. wasn't a combination of Rolly and uh, Rocky Mohan. Of Had course, it been a Rolly Rocky Mohan combination, I'm hundred percent sure. That Dhiraj yeah. Paul would have been a part of it. Of course, sir. I right, still remember we it wasn't a Rolly and Dhiraj combination. Yeah, sir. Ah, I still remember are. this. This is the the original edition, the original one, and I still remember I was too young when I got this assignment, and uh, the book was launched in 1999. Correct. And, and you did and, the photography in 1998. Yeah, and and sir, this. This is note wow. written by you on this book. So this is uh, maybe a collector's item for me because this is the original edition, and of course the sign, your signs are here. Yeah. Yes. So, and and then, sir, uh, I have one more thing to share with all our audience. Also, the original camera used to shoot this book was Mamiya six four five, and <laughs> the book originally was shot on film. No digital were there that time. Yes, absolutely. And yeah. I remember, I remember after every shoot, there was a, a bunch of rolls that promote you to take away with. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that was the era where you know photographers were very, very precise. More, they were seeing about the composition. They were worried about lighting. But now, sir, you have noticed that because of the digital era and mobile photography, killing that essence of photography. What do you think on that line? Well, you know, uh, uh, there is to be very honest with you. During this lockdown period, I have uh, taken a professional, semi-professional course online uh, okay. on iPhone photography. Right. Uh, and uh, believe me, uh, there is no um, challenge uh, left in photography, uh, yeah. except the fact that you have to have an artistic eye. Uh, yeah. You have to be able to get the right composition. Right, uh, right. Like in your case, I still remember one day you were walking uh, through the garden with me uh, in my last home, and yeah. uh, we had this beautiful gulmohar tree, 
and I was trying to take photographs and you came and stood behind me and said, okay, you've taken that picture. Now let me take one for you. On your mobile. Yeah, I still remember. That's right. That. On my mobile. Yeah. And then you took that photograph. And uh, if I was to go through the archives, it was chalk and cheese. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the way you composed that whole uh, picture uh, yeah. was quite uh, remarkable. So yeah. I think composition continues to be the art. Of course. Uh, yeah. the, 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 the scientific side of the story uh, is becoming more easier. Uh, yeah. That's my realization. Uh, that's true. But the artist in you, Dhiraj, uh, or the artist in any photographer will stay, will stay because you have to be an artist to be able to take good pictures. Right. Aesthetics will remain more powerful than maybe the, the mobile absolutely. or the digital yeah. camera. Yeah, so, sir, this is our second book, Vazma Kashmiri Food. And uh, this, is, this was 2001. Absolutely, Dhiraj. And yeah. uh, we'll talk about all these books in time, but I need to tell you, uh, uh, I have just uh, been, uh, I've just written a, a 1200 word article uh, okay. on Baswan for the Taj magazine, right. uh, which is going to be printed in July now. It was earlier Lovely. supposed to come out in June. Yeah. And uh, the credit for Roli and Dheeraj is very prominently mentioned in this book, which is actually featured on eight pages of Great. the Taj magazine, which very stays nice, for sir. six months inside every Taj room. Very nice, sir. Very yeah. nice. Thank you very so much. I've just finished doing that. Then, sir, uh, another achievement. Rocky Stable and Harper Collins were the publisher. Absolutely. And this was the first book which we were shot on digital. So that Absolutely. time there was a transformation. This was in 2010. Correct. So 2004 and 2005 we already shifted to digital. Yes. So this was shot on a digital camera. And I, I still remember a couple of pictures like they were so good that the readers would be happy to see them like this Pidney shot also used on the back cover was just remarkable. Absolutely. And the approach was also less is more that era. Yes, correct. And I remember you, you going very up close to the food and yeah. uh, your tripod stand was virtually on top of the food, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, then uh, if we talk about some aesthetics behind the images, is like yeah. those shots which were like created in half a day uh, it took a lot of time for setups they were remarkable you know till date when we see the quality of publishing the print just age, look at that just look yeah. at that wonderful yeah do you know something dheeraj i think you know all three of us yeah uh, promote you me Indeed. i think we gave our heart to this book of course of course and in those days, a lot of you time, remember if you, in those days, you remember, there weren't any, any cookbooks. Yeah, yeah. Now, there, you had done one uh, fantastic uh, uh, three-book uh, series with Roly before that. The Menu Planner. And, yes, that was, that's still a, still a big legend seller yeah. for them. Right. Um, but I must say, we are very proud that this book that you did for me uh, has now been in print for over 20 years and over has been years. in print continuously for 20 years. Perfect, perfect. It's a great celebration. Very few books have managed that. Right, of course. And then, so artistically oh, done. And, I know, love that picture. I still, I still remember that the setup was done over your piano top. Correct. Absolutely right. You know? Absolutely right. <laughs> so, and and even some of the recipes. The great thing about this book is like shooting food for so many years, like since 1992. You know, you grow up the taste of food also. Yes, absolutely. Because, you, know, you, you know that whenever we were starting food photography, we were eating it throughout and tasting it and, you know, experimenting as well. So uh, I must say that the, these set of three books are the example of simplicity in recipes. Because if you find those recipes easy to cook, then it makes your life easy as a cook. What do you say, sir? I quite agree with you, uh, uh, Dheeraj. Actually, as a matter of fact, uh, you and uh, our entire team uh, were my guinea pigs uh, because almost uh, we tested every recipe uh, twice or thrice. And if you remember in those days, we used to manage to do, I think, six or seven uh, 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 shots every day. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, even less. Even, less. even lesser. And yeah. uh, we, used to, we used to cook uh, uh, 
uh, every every recipe to its ultimate finish so we never compromised we never undercooked the food uh, you were brave enough to accept the fact that i wanted the cook to uh, to be able to present as the product will look and you were kind enough to actually convert that into the final visual so right. would you believe it till date my biggest uh, conversation is that whenever you cook from my book just look at the picture and yeah. you will get the same image on your dining table uh if you cook it the way i tell you to and so that's this, this was the best credit. thing actually that's yeah. a great credit to you dheeraj because yeah. you were able to catch and capture every color in its true sense right and so definitely those they, colors were also printed brilliantly and i course, remember how prabodh used to refer back to you uh before going ahead with okaying any of any course. photo and and if if the need arises we even reshot couple of dishes because we were Correct. not Absolutely. happy with the flow of the book then we Absolutely. need to reshoot so Absolutely. first tip for all our listeners who want to be a food photographer or they are already pursuing food photography is like the key to success is the food should be cooked and shot as soon as possible so best thing what we created with rocky sahab was the our studio setup was designed just in his dining hall with all the studio lighting and tripods and camera set up there and the kitchen was just next door so the kitchen should be very close to your studio setup if right. you know it takes lot of time to bring the food in into your table top then it makes it lose the character it lose the texture which is so important for food correct absolutely there's a lovely comment here by a gentleman called deepak pandya yeah is yeah. nowadays maximum food photography is done by fake products no, no, uh, no i'd no. like to correct you there it's not yeah. done by fake products uh, the advertising agencies have certain requirements for food photography so when you shoot for cookbooks and you shoot for ads it's 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 a different paradigm so yeah. i don't think it's done with fake products i think it's done in a more um artistic way to make the product look far better than right. it may be right no again uh, deepak ji for your information i would like to add more to rocky sahab's comment so this book when we shot this book the recipes were tried thrice in uk by various food experts so that the recipes should gel with the images so the images will look real and whenever somebody is cooking through this these books so it should not be like you know sorry figure for him or for people like we have produced that book and and then what you have mentioned that fake products have been used in food photography is before 90s because that trend was there when you were using some shaving foam for your ice creams but now the trend have changed now what people say is they they will be shooting just on the table you are eating food and you left the fork with the food on it and then that could be a shot for your living uh magazines like so so trend have been evolved like if you notice in a book like this so lot of props being used right and the focus was very very sharp in that 90s and 2000 so everything used to be very sharp and then the trend changes in late to 2000 when the food is just partially in focus i'll i'll show you couple of images so you will know what we are talking about see now see trend have changed like the focus is just on the rose petal and and the dessert is just looking very very wow and and the focus is all shallow so that makes a, a life of photographer easy because lighting made makes simpler but then photography is tricky because you need to focus on a right spot when it comes to food photography plus the whole uh, concept of uh, of uh... Uh, getting the correct lighting there uh yeah. it's so so important i mean uh, uh to get the right kind of light whether it's traveling from the left where the shadow will appear uh, what will be the length of that shadow i mean i uh, to be very honest with you i mean when i first saw you shoot uh, 20 years ago when you were a, a young boy at that point of time um i must say you had a great sense of sense of understanding light 
and that was the key and i think that's an inheritance that you have from your great uh, legendary father of course sir that that credit is goes to him and we are thankful that we were incidentally born in the family of photographers where yes. they were already very very reputed and skilled and we got to learn many things in our childhood days as well by living with the legend absolutely and i'm yeah. sure you you spent a great deal of time uh, seeing him do his uh, uh, you know practice his craft as they say right so yeah. why why we are here discussing food photography is also because you know when there is a lockdown situation like this and we all are you know uh, very very uh, uh, scared about corona virus and uh, government wanted us to be at home be safe so uh, we can't travel we can't shoot landscapes we can't go to like partying and all so food photography is one where you can do it at home so you can create at home so create at home hashtag series are ongoing in uh, insta and facebook where you know photographers are practicing photography at home musicians are doing riyaz while while they are at home so i'll 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 uh, maybe i suggest couple of things and of course rocky saab will also suggest couple of things where you can do it at home simple food shots or maybe i'll just throw an idea just you create a spice shot where you know you bring out all your masalas from your kitchen spread it nicely over a raw table or maybe a raw wood or some textured background backlit is very important so open the windows open your doors if you don't have studio lights place the light behind your subject like you know it's like against the light situation and couple of thermocoils white bed sheets or white towels to fill the light near your camera so maybe these simple lighting setups and your existing camera can do wonderful thing only thing is you need to be inspired right so don't get bored at home just play your favorite music and just see the light and shoot some food shots rocky saab what you say i agree with you totally i totally agree with you uh, today uh, we we don't eat our food uh, uh, without taking a photograph and i think uh, we are all becoming amateur photographers and uh, i think it's a skill that you can hone you can you can do a lot with this skill uh, it's a fun skill it's a, it's self gratifying not everybody can become a dheeraj paul uh but it's a very self gratifying uh, uh process uh, where you can actually uh, you know uh, take a photograph of food and go and revisit it almost after 10 15 20 days and uh, you know live the live the live the journey of that particular incident uh, when you ate that gorgeous uh, lamb chop that lovely cake that lovely bhindi uh, uh, whatever whatever is of your interest but remember this that you are photographing food and uh, the less you tamper with it the better it is because if you can give it give it a natural look nothing nothing better than that of course sir very yeah. right very right food must look like food so one um, again um, uh, like those nostalgic feelings are still there like i can still smell those meals which you have cooked specially for the book and we have tasted that those stuff in in our lunches and safed keema was one which is adorable and and when i said like simplicity about food in preparation in styling and in photographing then i i still remember gosh sadgi so ah. that tastes so good so good less spices but more aromatic flavor so that that was just i have a a beautiful memory to share with you um uh, uh, two of the the legends of food uh yeah. dr pushpesh pant yeah. and and my dear friend uh, god rest his soul uh, jigs kalra uh ah. were together with me in lucknow at one on one occasion when over a meal we had a conversation about the safed keema and uh, i was relating to the two of them that uh, you know i cook a i cook a keema dish in which the keema remains white in color to which uh, dr pant and jigs both uh were unbelieving they said no no it can't be done i said okay then you have an invite to my home which is yeah. also in lucknow and uh, you you most welcome to come home and i'm going to cook this for you yeah yeah and yeah. Uh, they both arrived home that very evening mm -hmm. and i served them this keema till date i mean it's as recent as a month month and a half ago dr pant and me were together at a symposium 
and we were addressing this convocation and he related that story after almost about 25 30 years uh, and that safed kima still continues to amaze people of how it's even possible uh, to yeah. keep kima safed and cook it but i must thank you for getting it so right because if you take that photograph uh, just like you took the the photograph of safed bas uh, yeah. is a very similar very difficult to give uh, uh, right uh, uh, depth of field to something white in color of and course of course you were able to you were able to do that for both the photographs and thank you very much for that yeah and then i i remember when we were shooting and preparing for our food shots and when when the dishes are little dense in color like something related to spinach like uh, keema haryali or maybe some ghost which which has spinach or some green like kasuri methi or something like that so those ingredients always give a, your food a dense look so yeah. it becomes very difficult to shoot for a photographer because you know but how did you see, overcome that problem there i mean yeah so that, that was my my next uh, solution also this yes. picture is of course one of my favorite yes right and and why i am showing to the audience also just keep looking to this picture shot in 1998 right but then the picture is very very contemporary styled so the food stylist that time was the publisher himself mr pramod kapoor and we all three as rocky sahab said we all three together made this book uh, you know and the the lighting used was again see the backlit used for the keema you can just see the cardamoms very very uh, you know distinguishedly and and then the color of the greens in the background then green chilies as a prop and overhead shot taken just parallel to the uh food so this is again shot in 1999 and so contemporary like it's looking so modern indian food in a modern uh environment like you can see this so only thing is don't under expose your images when you are shooting something like dark because then the green will appear more towards black so and then the reflectors the fill lights are very important for somebody who is just starting food photography as a new photographer so uh, fill light is the secondary light in your pictures like main light is the key light which is the first light the main light uh, which is more in, in intensity and then the fill light would be the secondary light which is weaker than the main light so uh, again if you go out and see the sun almighty sun it's a main light and then the light which is reflected back from the sky on your faces on your subject is the secondary light so always be remember it's not important to use many lights for your food shot but it is important how you place your light for your food shot so i will say that you know 90% of the food shots are backlit right but with the fill on the frontal frontal means just next to your camera lens it makes your pictures very appealing right sir sir add something we have a, we have a particular um, uh, person who joined our uh, conversation yep. her name is cupcake curry from bangalore yeah and yeah, i yeah. know her personally and she's a very very proficient cook and an exceptionally good photographer right, and right. Uh, she is saying that she has made haryali keema but oh. i'd love to see her photographs uh, the haryali keema and then share that with you and me dheeraj okay 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 so Been cupcake curry here's a challenge for you uh, thanks for being here and yep. uh, we will we see your proficiency at what you do but do take a picture of haryali keema next time you cook it and do share it with us now uh, guys just a simple shot of spices of course these are uh, kashmiri spices so you will have a pastrom here and saffron but the idea is just see the light like it's a evening light falling on something from a very very low angle so so the tip for shooting spices or something which is very low is like the light should be just on the table level so don't put the light higher like you know so you need to set the light according to your surface of your food because we need softer lights we need soft boxes diffusions but end of the day the texture of the food should not be missed the color should not be false at all so that is very very important when it comes to lighting for food right sir sir uh, please uh, dheeraj my question to you as a photographer is that how much is a 
or should I change that question? Uh, what importance is there to plating uh, for a good photograph? Yeah, because of course, styling is very, very important. Like it changed with the era because uh, I remember 90s, you also know that, you know, a lot of hodgepodge situations were there. Like, you know, plate was pulled with more portions and then a lot of stuff all around. But then it simplified later during the course of uh, maybe years. But now important is styling is very important. Then, then comes styling through the lens. Because one is you do plating in the kitchen. Chefs normally do it in their hotels and they, then they bring plate for photography. But then when you see through the photographer's viewpoint or his lens, the perspective changes. So the main agenda is you need to set through the lens. If food stylist and photographer both are working together, they should be looking through the viewfinder and then adjust the final composition, the final arrangement of the props and then the lighting is done. So that is the main key to be successful in food photography. Ah, good. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Traveling Foodie. Uh, yes, I, I don't know your name, but uh, I'm glad to have met you uh, both. Absolutely fantastic. And I look forward to seeing you soon. So good, good that we can see a lot of uh, young uh, guys who are more into food photography, like... Uh, Artistic lensman, I can see here, very, very talented newcomer from Mascom Research Center. And they are also here and, you know, experiencing about food photography. And uh, everyone is asking more on lighting. Uh, they, they want to know about lighting. That's true because photography is, uh, you know, painting with light or sketching with light. So photography will remain uh, very much in, but then the lighting is so very important. And, and uh, sir, we'll, we'll educate them something on how uh, we, we did those uh, classy Indian food shots where, you know, a lot of fat was available, like, you know, a lot of oil and ghee were available because essentially that recipe needs that, uh, uh, you know, those uh, gravy or you say like uh, shorba. So uh, t uh, maybe you can educate them how we did uh, that technique of removing that oil from your mouth. It would be great. <laughs> so how, you know, a uh, uh, food expert turned into an, a doctor and did that surgery <laughs> with you. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm sure all of you must have had these small pipettes uh, that used to be av available in those days. And what we used to do is to draw the oil out of the dish uh, by, you know, uh, pushing this little pipette and its mouth into the oil and suck the oil out and bring it down to a level. Uh, and, and you should be aware that the longer you keep a dish on the table, uh, the more oil it'll give up. Uh, yeah. So this was a constant battle uh, between how much oil the heat wanted in the plate and how much was possible to be removed. So I think this was a, a, great, uh, a great thing. Hi, Rashmi. Good to see you here. Thank you for joining me today. And then we I still to, uh, remember one more technique. Uh, we have, this, bringing we up. have a legendary, legendary Rashmi Uday Singh here. So yeah, glad to yeah. have you here. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. The other technique uh, which I remember, still remember, was like the food is plated into a bowl and, you know, a lot of oil are all around. But we, we put the, uh, you know, the, these paper napkin-like antenna inside the corners, four corners. And by the time the, all the oil is just uh, absorbed by those, uh, you know, cotton, uh, you know, uh, napkins. And, and, and then the work, then work was done. The plate. And then the process of cleaning the plate. Of which, course. Which I do remember, you were the ultimate expert at it. I, I got a lot of practice by doing like, uh, if I say more than, I did more than 30 books on food. Yes. So, so after doing those books and then a lot of ad campaigns for hotels and direct clients and some uh, new restaurants, so menu shooting and stuff. So, you know, it, it got me like that was my first uh, career shoot. Food was the first thing which I launched myself in 1992. So, you know, that do you, miss, do you miss doing food anymore or you I, I keep on doing, sir, I keep on doing. The last book was done by uh, Rashpati Bhavan and I was commissioned that book, India's First Table. So I ah. did all those banquets and VIP gatherings and arrangement, how they place uh, crockery on the table, how they measure 
everything in line. So I did that project, which was I very very challenging. I'll I'll send it book. across. I'll I'll come over and bring it for you. And well, that was a I, challenge. I see you. I see you every day in my home because yeah. I have this most beautiful picture uh, of these wonderful poplar trees and yeah. with this single single white bird taking right. off and a small right. child standing. Yeah. Uh, that course. incidentally is that book is a place of pride in my bedroom, right, and right. Uh, of all you, of all all of you to know, it's yeah. an autographed copy of uh, uh, one of most beautiful photographs taken by Dheeraj. And thank right. you very much for that. Thank you, sir. And good thing about that picture is that is printed on an archival paper, so it will last over hundred years. Well, it's still doing so beautifully. You, you will see me for over hundred years from now. <laughs> and uh, no, no, it's a place of pride. Think, yeah, uh, lady is asking about, you know, uh, uh, how lighting helps to bring out texture in food. Of course, the lighting is like one thing which creates texture and which makes picture also dull. So when whenever we need to have texture in food, only thing which we need to do is we need to place the light angular. Like if we are placed, this is the food shot and we are placing the light little angular like this is a food stuff and light is now right now falling is like flat because it's frontal but if i move the food like this so the light is now angular on my palm so it creates more texture so whenever we are shooting food we make sure that light is striking from low and from an angular distance that is important if we put food here and light hair on the top of our overhead then the food will become very very flat so we avoid that situation. Either we use side lighting or we use the light behind the subject. So that works best for food photography. Right. But it's a great lesson for me because as I mentioned to you that yeah. I've taken a course on iPhone photography right. and I'm learning uh, the, the advantages of overexposure and underexposure. Of course. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I'm learning the, uh, the tricks of uh, uh, long distance focus and close focus. Uh, right, right. And, and it, it's very interesting because uh, the iPhone really allows you to do all these things in a right. very simplistic manner. Right. So one more more exercise for create at home for you guys uh, is you need to do bottom lighting. Very simple. It's not difficult. But then bottom lighting, you just see your citrus food like lemon slices and your uh, oranges and stuff. You just slice them thin and place it on a glass somewhere and the light should come from below right you have some glass tables at home normal you can turn it into a, your lighting setup only thing is you just place a uh, butter paper over your under your table so that it diffuse the light and maybe you place a led bulb or something below your table and then ah. put the food stuff over the top and see those light coming through below makes your food looks translucent, right? So if you see those translucent effect, you can shoot some macro photography spray, sprinkle some water also. And the key goes like you need to mix glycerin with water one ratio one so that it stays for longer time when we are shooting food stuff. Of course, those would not be eatable after shooting, but then maybe for a shot, you can afford that. So they look very fresh and uh, summer is already on the way. So it, it could be a very, very summerish shot where uh, you will get a lot of colors and you will satisfy your inner self also and be creative on that. Explore different compositions. Now that's a great education. I mean, I, I'm certainly going to put it into practice as soon as possible. Yeah. Because so thank you. I mean, you so really, easy. you really are a, a, a very, uh, a very eloquent teacher, I must say. So it may, may be worth my while also to take a lesson from you after the lockdown is over. <laughs> so, sir, because I am still shooting uh, at home because you know you have to be uh, creative as a photographer, and uh, you will see a uh, lot of uh, videos and movies, and then computer and mail and stuff. But then. After a while, listening to music and then you get bored, you need to have your camera ready. So my camera is always ready with me. And these days, uh, uh, I have graduated to a camera which is 60 megapixel. 
And this is a fantastic camera made by Sony, which is A7 R M4. And this uh, alone lens will be wonderful for shooting all products and everything related to food. This is 90 millimeter micro lens. Wow. Right. So macro is the key for all food shots. And whether we are shooting something in the plate or we are just shooting the close-ups or product or spices, anything macro lenses are uh, used. So that those are the best options, uh, right, for uh, food photography. So you, this camera of yours, what must be the weight of it, David? Sir, these are very lightweight. These are actually mirrorless cameras. Ah. And uh, so the form factor is also like very, very thin. If you see this, this is very, very uh, thin camera. Like, you know, it's very, very thin. Because the mirror is not there, so it makes life easy. And if you remove the hood, so see, the lens is just this much. You can measure it with my palm. Wow. Right. So they are very handy and very, very professional because this is one of the most professional camera ever on the planet Earth right now. Because till we get a next camera. So this is the highest megapixel camera available. So the beauty is if we are shooting for a cookery book or a food shot for advertising agencies and later we found that, you know, we don't need those props. We need to blow it up the main dish. So we can just go ahead because there won't be a quality loss as such. Right. Got it. That would be the uh, best thing about the but that's, that's the big uh, That's the big change. But, you know, recently I've been seeing Dheeraj uh, yeah. that uh, photography is going back a full circle. Um, yeah. You know, food, uh, which is a subject related to both of us, I have found that food is going back uh, to larger tabletops. Uh, so it's almost like a cycle after about 20, 25 years where the high focus, the close focus is now being changed to a setting. So you're seeing food more and more displayed in a table setting, in a setting where there's a lot of texture below the photograph and other things. And this is a very recent development I've been seeing that's been coming out of the US. Now, I don't know whether... The U.S. really is the leader of all this. But I've seen this new change that's taking place. Even if you notice some of the TV programs that are coming, even there, the photography, the angles are all changing. And yeah. food is going back to the old style of being photographed. Of course. And then yeah. that, that style is always in which we mentioned that, like, you know, it shows that the presence of someone on the table because, you know, you can't just shoot fancy. Well said. That's, the a, that's an absolute right point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe a fork with the food on or, or a crumpled napkin just by the side of food or some, uh, maybe just some making spices. it look more natural yeah, of than course. to leaving it as a, as a dish only by itself. Right. Or maybe I just uh, some, some specks of uh, black pepper around the table also somewhere. Maybe you are eating and you know, it's spilled out of your plate Correct. and also very, very in. And all lifestyle magazines, they, you know, work on that lines. But of course, advertising photography is more precise, more neat and Correct. sometimes made up. But then otherwise, the photography is like, you know, very, very uh, natural situations where, you know, it's more on food and, and more on people with the food. Yeah. So that is important. So we haven't done something on um, uh, uh, like, you know, mocktails and cocktails together, but we, we mixed wine with, with that our Harper Collins book, I remember, you know, you yes, have suggested yes. wines along with food. Yeah. Because it's very, very difficult to mix food, which is like plated and, and a glass, which is like. Correct. Absolutely. Uh, vertical. Yeah. So two, two different geometrical axes uh, to visualize with your camera is, is not easy. It's, it's not easy because many time when you, you know, you know, you style your uh, wine bottles and glasses, but then the food is not looking that good. But when you focus on your food, then your bottle or glasses will look a little, you know, uh, distorted. Okay. So it's a challenge for photographer and stylist and food experts, you know, how to do about that. So we need to do a couple of those shots also together. Where well, Dheeraj, with... it's, it's actually time for us to do another book together. Yeah, uh, of course. I have, I am, I have just completed the manuscript of one of my books and uh, uh, I'm actually going through the process. This, this lockdown has been totally godsend 
because I've got the opportunity to uh, to uh, practice and to recook and cook and recook the same dishes, yeah. uh, which has been quite interesting. And uh, I was talking to uh, Kapil and uh, Pramod the other day, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we're going to have something that will come off the ground very soon. Why not, sir? Why not? Very well. And, and look then forward to doing another project I'm, with you. Yeah, I'm taking one query from Nikhil, and he wants to know how to show those steaming food shots. So the first, uh, you know, first tip as a photographer is the steam will only be visible when you backlit your food shots against the dark background. So the the first error which food foodies and bloggers they do is without knowing they just lit up or or you know put some fire behind the food and the background is all white. The plate is white. The back the table mat is white. The walls are white. And then they expect that smoke is not coming because we don't know how to do it. So the tip is you need to have a dark background for that. So low key style image, backlit, and then you will get automatically the steam of your food. Or 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 maybe with the tea glasses you will have some uh, smoke coming in. But never don't use cigarettes or incense. Those uh, your agarbatti and stuff. Because those smokes are more towards blue color temperature, so you can make out from your food pictures that these uh, fumes are not real. So these are made up by these type of uh, substances. So good is you set up your shot and you just bring the piping hot food on the table and the lighting setup all need to be set up before that, and you just need to click and take the image. That is the key. So this there was a very, very questions for you. Yeah. Some people Which, are wanting to know about lenses, and people yeah. want to know. Hundred millimeter, hundred millimeter is very good for food photography. I, I'm, I'm seeing you are mentioning hundred macro. Of course, Canon is hundred macro, so is ideal for shooting anything. Eighty-five, ninety millimeter, hundred millimeter is very good for taking food photography. It's wonderful lens. Don't worry, you have the right lens. You have quite a you uh, you have quite a number of photographers, young uh, uh, aspiring photographers here, which is quite fantastic. Quite yeah. quite fantastic. Yeah. So, really sir, I think uh, the session is not like uh, uh, because there is a limit for each session. Yes. So it's already forty-five minutes done, and uh, before it gets disconnected because of the limit of time, I think the message should be passed on from your side to the audience. And of course, uh, just throw something which they can be busy at home, and just uh, maybe some simple recipe or some task where they can cook and eat and shoot also. Please, sir, from your side. Well, well, all I have to say is number one: be well, be safe, be very careful, um, and uh, don't throw portion to the wind. Uh, this little um, aberration in your life today uh, will be forgotten by you in in a year's time. I promise you, um, keep keep very very secure, and make sure that you do not uh, do not expose yourself unwantingly uh, to anything that may cause you uh, any any form of illness. But having said that, be fully aware of the fact that I come with come to you with a lot of responsibility. Be aware of the fact that this is not a killer disease. It is it is a disease which you will have to develop. Uh, 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 immunity too, and uh, I'm sure if we are fed well, we are kept well, we will be able to fight it off. Uh, it's a more pronounced version of the flu. Uh, it is very highly contagious, but do not be afraid of it. Do not get yourself in a bind. Uh, if you look around you, the number of people who are being able to survive this are far greater than people who are. Finding it difficult to go through, so uh, get your get your facts in place. Uh, be careful, be safe, and listen to what your government has to say to you, because it's being said for your betterment. Uh, do not do not listen to crap on WhatsApp. Uh, excuse my English, but uh, save yourself the hassle from all the nonsense that keeps flying all over the place. I don't like preaching too much, and on a lighter lighter note, um, I just want to tell you is cook from your heart. Not, of not course. from anything else. Uh, right. Do what that gives you pleasure. 
Remember the taste is in your palate. Remember those tastes and add those tastes to your dish. You will find you'll be able to convert any dish to make sense to you. Um, don't 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 get don't get uh, intimidated by what you cook the first time. Uh, you may get it wrong, and but that's the case even with photography. The first photograph you take may not be what you expect it to be. So give yourself an opportunity uh, to to um, experiment. And cooking is as much an experiment as what Dheeraj has told you about photography. And I then one thing is Dheeraj. common. Yeah, one thing is common in both uh, art. Like you know, if you are cooking, you have to be patient. You have to be slow and steady. You can't rush. You can't hurry up. And same goes with photography. When you are doing photography, you need to be very patient. So always remember, for photography, you have to be patient. And food needs extra more patience because. you need to wait for the right uh, light and then of course the food is cooked and then you set up and you don't like it then you recook it and then it's back on your table so be sure that you know the food should look appetizing that is for sure and uh, i think you cook at home only these days don't order it from uh, outside this is my opinion maybe some people won't agree on that but you know it's better well, to be safe there there yeah. i have a small comment there yeah. there are number of young people living all by them, by themselves yeah. and it's not possible for them to cook because they live in studio apartments which don't even right. have a cooking range or maybe they will or if they have the opportunity to cook they will learn also Yes, but you know, I mean, not everybody has the resources to do so. Right. So right. I'm sure people must be ordering in. I'm just saying that be cautious, be careful, and uh, be safe. That's all. And Offer. I don't think you need to worry. And one more right. small little tip here it is that whenever you are experimenting in the kitchen, uh, please keep a book and a, and a pen handy, and take notes. And uh, you will be you will be surprised at how quickly you'll be able to set up. a booklet of all the lovely memories you have created in the kitchen and i have a pen and i have a book sir <laughs> bless you big day and then then which we have learned from you also as sir with the experience also if you cook any recipe three or four times then you can master that recipe absolutely right so don't think that you know you will cook it once and you will be master and nobody can be master in this uh, small tenure you have to practice riyas and then you know you can be successful so uh thank, thank you, you very much thank you very much rocky saab for joining in we'll we'll do some more some more uh, uh you know i i opening uh, sessions with you and of course we need to do some cookbooks together again thank you very much thank you bye bye take care bye bye good night good night bye everyone